ever asked yourself, how do I know if my drainage pathways are draining? How can I tell if they need a little extra TLC? Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss one method. This is just one method of looking at and seeing how your body is functioning and potentially using that as a guide to give you a little bit more information or at least maybe to dig into that specific drainage pathway a little bit more to see if you do need a little TLC. All right, so what am I even talking about? What I'm talking about is the organ clock. So in traditional Chinese medicine, what they do or what they've done is they've taken the 24 hours in a day and divided it up into two hour increments. And each of those increments is then associated with a specific organ or organ systems. And the way that they determine which organ goes with which time is based on the amount of vital force or chi that's flowing through that organ at certain times. Meaning when there's more chi flowing through that system, that was the time that it was associated. So interesting enough, our drainage pathways, for the most part, all fall while we're sleeping or while we should be sleeping. So what I'm going to talk about is the breakdown of the times and if you wake up unexpectedly, unwantedly, don't know why, it's not like you set an alarm and you're supposed to wake up at that time where you're like, Dr. Caitlin, I always wake up at six o'clock because I have to be at work, then that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to waking up without knowing why you're waking up. And when you wake up, for the most part, you're pretty wide awake and it takes you a hot second to fall back asleep, all right? So let's break it down and let's talk about which organs are associated with which times and also which emotions go or can be linked to those organs because sometimes we may be feeling more of a certain emotion. P.S. it's usually not the ones we wanna feel. Or when we're working on that organ pathway, certain emotions may come up and you might be like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's happening. I'm feeling worse. It's not always a bad thing. It's just giving us feedback. Okay, so let's start. If you are somebody who wakes up between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning, that's the hour of our liver. And remember, our liver is a big detoxifier. It has a lot of functions. It does a lot of different things. And so if we're waking up unexpectedly between the hours of one and three, it may be that our liver needs a little bit of love. It might need a little bit of support because we might be asking it to do too much, whether it's the exposures that we expose on a daily basis. And that can be anything from the air, the water, the perfumes, the makeups, because remember everything we put in and on our body, our liver has to break it down in order for it to be eliminated to alcohol, to medications, to supplements, to everything. So we may want to give our liver a little TLC if we're waking up during that time. Now, what is the emotion associated with liver? It's actually anger. So if we are getting very angry out of nowhere over things that would never anger us, we may want to take a step back and go, hmm, I wonder what my liver's doing. Does my liver need a little bit of extra support right now? Because usually what drives anger is also stress. And guess what stress does to the liver? It taxes it. So if you're somebody that wakes up between one and three, we're experiencing a ton of anger, or when you're like working on your liver and a lot of anger's coming up, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Take a step back, sit with it, and see what is going on, where is it coming from? It's just your body's way of communicating. Not saying that the communication is always, you know, lovely and we enjoy it, but it's just communication and it's a means of us to go and look and see what else could be going on. Okay, if you wake up between three and 5 a.m., that is the hour of our lungs and what is closely associated with our lungs is our lymphatics. So remember, our lymphatics, especially from our belly button down, so all of our internal organs, our abdomen, our legs, it all drains via the thoracic duct. And the only way that fluid moves through the thoracic duct is by breathing, so diaphragmatic breathing. So if we are not breathing properly, if we're doing shallow breaths, if we are mouth breathing, if we are 
chest breathing or shoulder breathing. All of that is going to affect the lungs because mouth breathing is going to put more pressure on our lungs. It doesn't have the same filter. It doesn't moisten the air the same way. And it's also not going to allow our lymphatics to drain. That could be the reason why you're waking up at that time. So taking a peek and looking at what is your lungs doing? How are you breathing? How is your lymph moving? Would be ideal. Now the emotion associated with lungs and lymph is sadness and grief. Now, quick story. About a year ago, a little over a year ago, we lost our black lab, Kyra, and I was crazy sad, thrown into a whirlwind of grief because she was my baby. She's been with me for over 13 years. Every day, she was my sidekick. And when we lost her, my lymph was not draining properly. And here's the thing, my lymph is my weak link. So if I'm doing bad things, if I'm not being good about moving my lymph, if I'm sitting long hours, if I'm doing a ton of dairy, my lymph is gonna get congested. And I had huge bags under my eyes. My whole face was swollen. My neck was swollen. You could see above my termini was swollen. I was a hot mess. So I firsthand have seen personally how these organ systems, these drainage pathways can be linked to specific emotions and it just gives us something to take a look at and work through. Now, with that being said, I'm not, again, not saying it's easy, but just to bring up, if you start working on your breath and you start working on your lymph and all of a sudden a bunch of sadness or grief comes over you, it's usually past emotions that we've stored, that we've held on to, that our body's now trying to let go of, which is fantastic. Okay, if you wake up between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., that's the hour of our gut. So our gut, our digestive system, is ultimately trying to eliminate, right? Have a bowel movement at that time. That's actually the best time of day to have a bowel movement, to eliminate everything from the 24 hours beforehand. Now, a lot of people don't actually have bowel movements when they first wake up. And that could be a transient time issue. That could be another connection issue with the liver or the lymph or the stomach or whatever it may be it could be our nervous system but ultimately if we wake up at that time and we're not meant to wake up at that time it could be a gut issue and that could look like things like having issues absorbing vitamins and minerals it could be an elimination issue like diarrhea constipation so there's a plethora of things that are associated with the gut now the emotion associated with the gut is defensiveness or even the feeling of being stuck. So it could be like you feel stuck in your job, you feel stuck in a relationship, you feel stuck in your house. Or if somebody brings something up, it could be that you are more defensive, you're reading into it more. And I'm not saying this across the board, you know, as always, everyone's different, but this is what they have found go hand in hand. So if any of those times you can relate to, I'm gonna encourage you to dig deeper, look deeper, maybe do some labs whether it's blood work, maybe it's a stool test, maybe it's working with a provider to see what is going on, especially if you're constantly waking up at the same time. The other thing that you're gonna wanna do is subscribe, hit the bell, because I'm gonna, as always, talk about things that you can do at home to support these drainage pathways. But it's always good to take a deeper look. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy draining!